Hello everyone, let's talk about Antetus. Ah, ants. There are a lot of them, no one animals won't use such a good food source. So how to become specialized in eating ants to become an ant eater? Let's start with the animal you will think about when talking about eating ants, the aardvark. The aardvark is nocturnal and is a solitary creature that feeds almost exclusively on ants and termites. It also has a symbiotic relationship with the fruit it eats. Whatever it means, while foraging for food, the aardvark will keep its nose to the ground and its ears pointed forward, which indicates that both smell and hearing are involved in the search for food. So one thing to keep in mind, to become an anteater, a good sight is not needed. Most of the examples I'll do are using smell. Maybe the ants are smelly, or maybe they smell like lasagna. When a concentration of ants or termites is detected, the aardvark digs into it with its powerful front legs. Its claws enable it to dig through the extremely hard crust of the termite or ant mound quickly. And if you plan to eat a lot of ants in the African savanna, please bring a good shovel or a medium excavator. Afterwards, the aardvark takes up an astonishing number of insects with its long, sticky tongue, as many as 50,000 in one night have been recorded. The termites biting or the ants stinging attacks are rendered futile by the tough skin. So many that choose to be ant eaters require a long tongue, like being the singer of the band Kiss, but also resistant, which being a rock star wouldn't guarantee. It is competition a finger to avoid to be an ant eater. Well, the next one actually lives. Where the aardvark lives, it's the aardwolf. It feeds primarily on species of a family of termites. Their technique consists of licking them off the ground as opposed to the aardvark, which digs into the mouth. They locate their food by sound and also from the scent secreted by soldier termites. An aardwolf may consume up to 150,000 termites per night using its long, broad, sticky tongue. So again, tongue, but digging abilities are not always important. It's another continent with savannas, which is famous for anteaters. Yes, Australia, the land of docile and harmless animals. Here you can find the number, the only marsupial fully active by day. He spends most of his time searching for termites. He digs them up from loose earth with its front claws and catches them with its long sticky tongue. Despite its banded and teeter name, it apparently does not intentionally eat ants. So, are they really ant eaters? Well, they are as in termite eater is a horrible term that no one ever used. How do we call the diet by some termites? Hmm. Just prove them with the anteaters. The favorable land of the harmless animals hosts also the short big echidna, whose diet consists mostly of ants and termites, while the Zaglossus long beaked species typically eat worms and insect larvae. The tongues of the long beaked echidnas have sharp, tiny spines that help them capture their prey. They have no teeth, so they break down their food by grinding it between the bottoms of their mouths and their tongues. So, an important thing to become a specialized anteater is to forget about teeth, don't go to the teeth changer or whatever it's called, let your mouth breathe, as in make space to eat. A bigger animal that feeds primarily on ants and lives in the Indian subcontinent is the sloth bear, as blue an expert hunter of termites and ants, which locates by smell. On arriving at the mound, they scrape the structure with the claws till they reach the last columns at the bottom of the galleries and disperse the soil with violent puffs. The termites are then sucked up for the muscle producing a second sound which can be heard 180 meters away. The scent smell is strong enough to detect rays three feet below ground. It is not fully specialized and so fits on other foods like fruits and is still a kid with those digging abilities, like the art bar and an ingenious way it prays. But that is enough about mammals for now. Let's see if you start from another anatomical structure, where many lizards specialize on insects, but only some of them are all about ants. About 70% of the Texas home lizard's diet is made up of a harvester ants, but these ones have to surpass another difficulty of eating ants, 
is not just mice. Vino, Texas whole lizards, possess a blood plasma factor that neutralizes harvester and vino, now known to produce copious amounts of mucus in the esophagus appearance which function to embed and incubate swallowed ants. Another group is the Dendrobatidae. The poison that gives them the alkaloid toxins that are found in their skin is from the ants they eat. Their diet is typically separated into two distinct categories. The primary portion includes prey that are slow-moving large in number, as small in size as ants. In the second category of prey are crickets and caterpillars. In the family Microhalidae, in those with narrow mouths, generally eat termites and ants, and the others have diets typical of most frogs. An expert in eating ants is the Eastern Narrow Mouthed Toad, an ant specialist, so the 95 percent of the prey items are of various ant species. His narrow mouth folds have a distinct skin fold on their upper neck, lay behind their eyes. They fold over to cover their eyes. This is hypothesized to be a protective mechanism against ant bites while eating. Again, to be an ant eater is important to defend yourself, because ants don't make it easy for you. Even snakes can eat ants. Scolicophilia, snakes, origin behaviors vary across families, but all feed on invertebrates, and some of the main food sources include antotermites eggs, which are tracked down by following chemical cues left by these invertebrates to create trails. Some birds are anteaters too, already many birds eat insects. But only few are specialized on ants. Ant beetles are forest birds that tend to feed at or near the ground since many are specialized ant eaters. There are even birds like ant birds, specialized on following the army ants, but they mostly feed on insects, fleeing from those ants. If we think of specialization, at least for termites and ants living in trees, flickers appear to use this resource. They peck hammer, pro pry, and sometimes gleam to catch rays. The primary diet are ants, termites, and wood burning beetles and their larvae. Similarly, woodpeckers can eat a lot of termites and ants. Is there any similarity between how these animals evolved, mammals, and not? When well, woodpeckers, the tongue bone is very long and winds around the skull through a special cavity that by catching the brain. Their long, sticky tongues, which possess bristles, aid these birds in grabbing and extracting insects from deep within a hole in a tree. Again, to be an anteater, it is really important. Possessing a badass tongue and let the tooth fairy do the job. If we go out of the vertebrate area, all specialization on ants looks like invertebrates don't have tongues. Being small can attack a big amount of ants, and lion can give us a clip. They have digging abilities, they build a pit. When the pit is completed, the lava settles down at the bottom, buried in the soil, uh, with only the jaws from projecting above the surface, often in a wide open position on either side of the very tip of the cone. The steep slope trap guys breaks into the lava's mouth, while avoiding the crater avalanche is one of the simplest and most efficient traps in the animal kingdom. The fine grain lining ensures that the avalanches which carry prey are as large as possible. Since the sides of the pit consist of loose sand at its angle of repose, they afford an insecure foothold to any small insect that inadvertently venture over the edge, such as ants, slipping to the bottom. The prey is immediately seized by the lurking ant lion, another insect familiar, and evolved the same elaborate mechanism for trapping prey by convergent evolution. Some Salticidae, a family of spiders, specialized in particular classes of prey, such as ants. Most spiders, including most salty seeds, avoid worker ants, but several species not only eat them as a primary item in their diets, but also employ specialized attack techniques and a scenosa. For example, circles around to the front of the ant and grabs it over the back of its head. Such myrmecophagus species, however, do not necessarily refuse other prey items and routinely catch flies and several prey, if usual, salty fashion. Without the special precautions, 
they apply in hunting dangerous prey such as ants, members of another spider family, or it could be either, both small, can be star-shaped webs on or under rocks or on walls or gravel. They hide near or below such webs and prey largely on ants, giving rise to common names such as Antita. Other examples include some mimicomorphs and mimics and mimicophiles. Mimicomorphs are Batesian mimics, giving them protection against predators which avoid ants and access to abundant food. So spiders too can become anteaters. They just need to avoid being attacked by their prey. And if you think that any invertebrate antita is a dangerous spider or monstrous larva, well, caterpillars can be ant predators too. For some Lycaenidae, caterpillars, only the first few instars are spent on the plant, and the remainder of their lifespan is spent as a predator within the ant nest. It becomes a parasite, feeding on ant regurgitations or a predator in the ant larvae. In this case, to predate, they have a way of deception. They just mimic the other of ant larvae. Microdon flies behave in the same way. Their larvae, in fact, may be found very deep in ant colonies. One of the predominant predators on ants are other ants, especially the army ants and their close relatives. Uh, some ants, such as the raider ant, who carry Beroi and the and New World Army Ant, Norma Mermek, as in Becchiae, are obligate mimicophages. Uh, that is, they eat exclusively other ants, so they cut out the best anteater out of all anteaters, exactly. But of course, they didn't talk of some pretty important anteaters from the Americas. Armadillos, some species, need to feed almost entirely on ants and termites, and how can I forget? of the Asian armadillos, pangolins. They are insectivorous. Most of their diet consists of various species of ants and termites and may be supplemented by other insects, especially larvae. They are somewhat particular and tend to consume only one of two species of insects. Even when many species are available, pangolins are an important regulator of termite population in the natural habitats. They fit all the criteria of other anteaters. Pangolins have very poor vision. They also lack teeth and rely heavily on smell and hearing. And they have other physical characteristics to help them eat ants and termites. Their skeletal structure is sturdy and they have strong front legs that are useful tearing into termites' mounds. They dig pretty good and the structure of the tongue and stomach is key to aiding pangolins in obtaining and digesting insects. Pangolins also lack the ability to chew, but while foraging they ingest small stones which accumulate in their stomachs. To help to grind the ants, this part of the stomach is called the gizzard, and it is also covered in keratin spines. These spines further aid to grind up and digesting the pangolin's prey. And last but not least, Anteaters, maybe the most famous animal specialist to feed on ants, they too have to avoid the jaws, sting, and other defenses of the invertebrates. Anteaters have adopted the feeding strategy of leaking out large number of ants and termites as quickly as possible. An anteater normally spends about a minute at a nest before moving on to another. A fleeing strategy and a enchanted anteater has to visit up to 200 nests per day to consume the thousands of insects it needs to satisfy its caloric requirements. The anteater's tongue is covered with thousands of tiny hooks called filiform papillae, which are used to hold the insects together with large amounts of saliva. The tongue is attached to the sternum and it moves very quickly, flicking 150 times per minute. The anteater's stomach has hardened folds and it uses strong contractions to grind the insects, a digestive process assisted by small amounts of ingested sun and dirt. So the last thing to be an anteater is that after giving up teeth to better use one's of tongue, an anteater needs a way to grind ants down. Otherwise, it won't be possible to digest them. So, those were all the adaptations and eaters have evolved to be successful. 
Handelshub. Bye.